Hey guys, it's Shara from Chop Diaries, and today I'm gonna to share with you how to build this simple sliding door cabinet. This particular project is going in a friend of mine's kitchen for some extra storage, but this would also be great in an entryway or a pantry or even as a TV stand. Like a whole lot of my projects, this could be used for so many things. This video is sponsored by my friends at Craig Tool, and I'm sharing the free building plans for this project over on craigtool.com. I will link them in the video description below, but if you're ready to see how it all came together, let's go. Like many of my projects, I started out by cutting down my plywood to get started. The main cabinet body was made from 3 quarter inch birch plywood, but I did use some spruce lumber for the face frame and for the doors. The complete tools and materials list can be found in the video description below, and the full cut list plus plywood cut diagrams can be found in the plans linked below as well. I started out by using my circular saw and Craig Rip Cut to rip my sheet into strips. Then I used my Craig AccuCut to trim these strips down to final size. To assemble the main cabinet body, I needed three pieces for the bottom and four pieces for the sides and dividers. I also trimmed down some smaller strips to serve as the top supports of the cabinet. Six total, two for each of the three cabinet sections. So I made four like vertical panels, the two end caps and then the two middle dividers to make three sections. Now the two middle sections won't have a face frame. And I'll explain that when we get there. It's because of the sliding doors and the way that I'm making the sliding doors. So anyway, those won't have a face frame on the front. Um, so those edges of the plywood will be exposed. So I'm going to edge band those, but I'm not gonna edge band any other piece of the cabinet carcass because all of those edges will be covered with a face frame in a future step. The front edge of the two middle divider panels will be exposed in the finished project. So I applied iron on edge banding to them before assembling. Now, many times people ask if you have to use edge banding if you're painting and no, you definitely don't. It's totally up to you. You could putty and sand the edges instead, but personally, I'd rather just iron on the banding. It's a lot quicker and the edges are still a lot smoother in the end. I used my Craig 720 pocket hole jig to drill 3 quarter inch pocket holes into the ends of the short top support pieces and along the ends of the bottom panels. Then I began assembling the cabinet using 1 and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. I used a scrap 1x4 block to install the bottom panels 3 and a half inches up from the bottom edge of each side. I installed the top supports flush to the top edge, one at the front and one at the back. I made sure to keep the edge banded panels in the middle as I assembled everything. Once I had two of the sections together, I did move it to the floor just to make it easier to add the final section. And now it was time to add the face frame. Now I only added a face frame along the top, bottom, and sides. I didn't frame the middle two dividers, which is why I applied iron on edge banding to them earlier. There's a reason for this, and this will make more sense later when I add the doors. But for now, I cut two pieces of one by four and two pieces of one by three to make the simple face frame. I used the one by fours at the top and bottom and the one by threes on the sides and I assembled this using three quarter inch pocket holes and one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. I test fit the frame before adding some glue and nailing in place, which is always a good idea to test fit before gluing anything. And notice that the face frame doesn't come all the way to the bottom. It's actually flush across the top of the bottom panels, but there's a three quarter inch space below it. That's intentional, it'll be covered with trim later. Speaking of trim, the next step was to add some baseboard trim around the bottom. I dug around my shop and found just enough to go around the bottom, but I did end up having to piece a couple of pieces together. That's okay, a little putty and a little sanding and you'll never even notice. 
Cut to fit these baseboard pieces and glued and nailed them in place. This front piece will cover the gap left below the face frame. I used some wood filler to fill in the nail holes and to smooth out all of the joints. Next, I pulled out my Craig shelf pin jig and drilled shelf pin holes in the three cabinet sections to install adjustable shelves. I used some scrap wood blocks to help me space these holes where I wanted and made sure that the front holes were just a little under 14 inches from the back edge since I only made my shelves about 14 inches deep. I was painting this cabinet white, so to make things a little easier, I went ahead and cut three shelves from three quarter inch plywood and then cut a quarter inch plywood back panel, but I went ahead and painted before I secured it. Okay, so we're gonna do that thing like they do on TikTok and Instagram where you just like snap your fingers and all of a sudden like everything's done. So I have the painted cabinet now. Um, this did not happen in the snap of a finger, but I did not film the process because the process is awful and I hate painting, but I've got the cabinet painted, the shell was painted and the back panel is painted back here as well. So now we can move on with the project. The worst part of every project is painting. And if you want to know how I did it, I literally just used a paint roller and a paintbrush. So nothing fancy. Um, so it would be a really boring process to film anyway. But now we can move on. So let's build the doors and the top and get this finished up. Once the cabinet shelves and back panel were all painted, I stapled the back panel in place, then moved on to adding the top. I had cut the top down to size earlier when I was cutting down all of my plywood sheets. So I applied iron on edge banding to the front and the sides, sanded and stained it, then centered it onto the cabinet. I used one and a quarter inch screws through the top supports to secure the top panel so that I had about an inch overhang on both sides and an inch along the front edge. And the final part, the part that made the biggest impact, was the doors. You can certainly make any style door that you'd like for this, but I chose to make solid wood slatted doors. So I cut down five one by six pieces for each door plus two thinner slats to run along the back side. I cut my back pieces from scrap plywood, but one by threes would work as well. I went ahead and stained these pieces before assembling. And if you're wondering what color this is, it's Minwax Provincial. I stained the back pieces in Minwax True Black, but these are hidden, so it doesn't really matter what color that you stain them. I laid out my 1x6s face down and glued and nailed the back pieces on to hold it all together. Also note that I did use gloves when staining, but apparently they just didn't work. I don't know. Ignore my stained hands. Once the two doors were together, it was time to figure out this whole sliding door hardware. Okay, so I bought this sliding door kit on Amazon and I will link it in the video description below. But it comes with a rail, obviously, for the um, like rollers to roll on and here and here are the rollers that will um, attach to the doors. Now I'll be honest the instructions that came with this kit are crappy so we're gonna figure this out together it can't be that hard. The rollers here need to roll on this rail but they don't I don't want them to hit the top so I need to make sure that I mount this far enough down that it's going to clear the top when it rolls. So I'm gonna say right there is probably pretty good. It's about an inch and seven eighths. I pre-drilled the holes to mount the rail first, making sure that it was far enough down from the top to leave room for the rollers to move. Then I installed the rail using the spacers and included screws in my pre-drilled holes. I went ahead and placed the stops on each end of the rail, but I will come back and adjust these later. For the rollers, I mounted them so that the bottom of the hardware bracket was about three and five eighths inches from the top of the door. Then I used the included screws to secure. 
This kit comes with anti-jump pieces, which are basically some plastic spacers that attach to the top of the door to prevent it from accidentally lifting up and jumping off the rail. Clearly, I don't know how to check the focus of my camera, so sorry about that, but that's what I'm installing here on the tops of the doors. You attach these with just one screw so that when you place them onto the rail, you can rotate them in place so they don't just jump back off the rail accidentally at some other time in the future. Now the last part was installing some guides to help keep these doors from swinging back and forth. The kit comes with these guides. They're made of two pieces, just like shown here. I could only install one screw with these, but I screwed the L-shaped bracket to the face frame right above the baseboard. Then I secured the front piece of the bracket and adjusted as needed to get the doors kind of where I wanted them. Then finally, I adjusted the stops on the end of the rail where I wanted the doors to stop rolling. There are just basically some set screws on the bottom that you can tighten and loosen as needed here. Now, this is just an FYI, just in case you are still wondering why I didn't put a face frame here on these two metal panels. And the reason is because when I slide these, the block on the back, if I had a face frame, it would hit. So I left these inset just a little bit further so that I could slide these doors across here. And with that, I could add the shelves in place using shelf pins and step back to check out the finished project. I've built sliding doors before, but never a sliding door cabinet. And I can say now that I'm definitely a fan. This was such a fun two day build and I really like the modern but rustic style. If you'd like to build one of these for your own, don't forget to check out the free building plans over on craigtool.com. And if you wanna follow along on all of the upcoming projects and plans, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.